Hello and welcome back to Langchain Zero to Hero, an unofficial tutorial series teaching you everything you need to know about the Langchain tech stack to get started with your own generative AI projects. In episode zero, we installed the necessary dependencies for building with Langchain, set up our first Langchain project, and experimented with PyTest to run our pirate chatbot. In today's episode, we will explore LangServe as a method for serving our LLM application as a real API and experiment with the LangServe Playground as a handy visual method for testing our LLM chains. Before we jump in, remember that you can find the prerequisite code for this episode on GitHub. Simply head to the releases page and click Episode 1 LangServe. Now, we're going to start today's episode in the terminal. Make sure that you are in the root of your project. The first command that we're going to want to run is going to set up our, LL our LLM API using langserve. Breaking down this uh, command, we use the langchain CLI tool to create an app. In this case, an app is an is a API. We're going to name it my langserve, and for the package, we're going to specify, first of all, uh, the current working directory, which is of course the root of this project, slash my app, which you'll recognize is the project that we worked on yesterday. Running it is going to take a little while. Why is this? Well, in order to get some of the necessary files, the way Langchain is currently accessing them, is by accessing the langchain.git. Now, this file is rather large and can take a long time to process or download over your network. So, uh, for the sake of brevity, we will be pausing the uh, recording until this command has finished. You should expect it to run without any kind of issue. However, uh, we will pick up the recording uh, for me in about five to 10 minutes, but for you in a few seconds in order to go through some of the um, later stages of running this uh, command, as you will need to uh, say yes or no to various settings after it is finished downloading. Welcome back. For me, that took about 10 minutes to process and set up. Now, let's see uh, so what some of these options are. First of all, we want uh, the Langchain CLI wants to run pip install dash e and then uh, this file path. Now, what does this mean? Well, dash e simply means to create a connection between the actual package that we're developing in our, rep in our repository and the pseudo package, which is going to exist within the my langserve uh, application. We'll dive into what that looks like in a moment. Now, we want to say yes and allow it to run. This should only take a few seconds. Now, do we want to generate a route code for these packages? We also want to answer yes. Now, this route code has not actually updated anything within our application. It's just given us a little snippet of Python code. So we just want to highlight it, copy it with whichever keyboard shortcut your system uses, and we'll keep hold of that for a moment. Now, let's have a look at what's just been installed. If we collapse the My App folder and expand the My LangServe folder, which has been created, we could see that we have four files this time. We have a pyproject.toml, which contains various dependencies. We have a packages folder, which, if we observe, contains my app. Now, this is actually identical to everything that we've put together in the previous episode, and that exists just here in our application, right down to our test file that we created with our example test chain. Collapsing all of these, and collapsing packages, we can then go into the app itself. Now, this is the actual API. 
Langserve makes it extremely simple to interact and create uh, Langchain APIs. Now, the code that we copied from our Langchain command line tool, we simply want to delete this line, which is commented, and paste in the two lines that we created. Now, I'm just going to move this dependency to the top of our file in order to tidy it up a little. And then what have we changed? Well, first of all, let's go through the file from top to bottom in order to understand what it does. First of all, we are importing fast API, which is a third party Python module, uh, which enables uh, easy and programmatic uh, API development. And from the Langserve package, which comes as part of the Langchain module, we've imported add routes as a function. And finally, you can see that we've created, uh, uh, we've imported our chain from my app, or oh, as my app chain, which just allows us to refer to the object as something slightly different. Now, can you see what's wrong with this line, line three? That's right. We're importing chain, which actually gets imported as a file. Now this is incorrect and will result in an error if we try to run the application. Instead, we want to import the chain LLM object, which we were creating last episode. We can do this by simply saying my app dot chain to refer to the chain file within my app and to import chain as an object correctly. Moving on to line five, we are initializing our fast API app and then in line seven, we are adding our uh, chain, our LLM chain to our app. And in this case, we're specifying a specific path in order to access it. We don't need to worry about lines nine through 12. However, if you were to run this file directly, it would import Uvicorn, which is a method for running uh, production grade Python servers. And then it would simply run our app on 0.0.0.0 and port 8000. However, as I said, we don't really need to bother with this right now because going back into our terminal, we can simply run another uh, command in order to execute uh, our server and get it up and running. First of all, we're going to want to CD into our LangServe application and then we're going to want to use the Langchain CLI tool once again to type Langchain serve in order to serve our API. Now, if we hit run, what we're going to do is initialize our application and you'll see that we've created our server. Now, the word art here is a little messed up, but I believe it's supposed to say Langserve. But as you can see, what is important is that the application has been created and the API has gone live. Now, we're being told that there are two URLs that we should look to visit. The first is the playground, and then the second is the docs. Now, let's head into our browser and actually follow these in reverse. Let's visit the docs first of all. Now, what is this? Well, fast API is not just a powerful way to serve APIs in Python. It also has some useful helper features, such as exposing all of the API paths within the fast API app use under the slash docs URL. Now let's investigate what we have exposed. We have a bunch of endpoints, but the only ones that we actually want to look at, one that actually might be uh, very familiar to you after writing our tests in episode zero, is my app slash invoke. Now you'll remember that we use the dot invoke uh, command on our chain in order to execute it. And indeed, if we look at the description, for the in my app slash invoke API path, we invoke the runnable with a given input and config. We can ignore what the config is right now. Those are some extra information that you can pass into the LLM. We won't be using that, but you can see that we end up constructing an input with 
text as an input uh, for our LLM chain. Now, if we wanted to, we could try this out. If we click try it out, you can see that we have an example. Let's update text and say hi there and click execute. Now, what this is going to do is make an API request to our endpoint. You'll see that the uh, curl equivalent is to have made a post request to the local host API on the slash my app slash invoke uh, URL. And we've said hi there. And what it has responded with, uh, just as we'd expect, a pleasant reply in the tone of a pirate. And indeed, there's some additional metadata that might be useful, including the fact that the message reply is of type AI, so that we know this is the AI responding to us. Now, this can be useful for uh, working with the API if you were to want to connect it to a JavaScript application or use it elsewhere. But what can be a lot more fun to play around with is the playground. Now, this is one of the features of LangServe. This is not a feature of FastAPI. This is a feature of LangServe. We are able to interact with our LLMs in a very simple way. So we have an input box here. We have some text. Let's say, hi there. Are you a real pirate? And then click start. And what you can see is we actually have a streamed response. Now, when we were testing the dot invoke command earlier, we were just receiving our response uh, as one message. The LLM was computing the entire text response and then returning it all at once so that we could read it. What's happening here is we are using a different uh, type of function. We are actually using the dot stream function. Now, what does dot stream do? As the name might suggest, what it does is it streams the response from the LLM. Now, LLMs don't actually produce an entire sentence or paragraph or essay all at once as their output. What they will do is they will output uh, token by token, word by word, depending upon their implementation. What does that mean? Well, it means that similarly to how you might speak as a regular human, to use humanity as an analogy, you might have a sentence in mind, but most often when you're speaking off the cuff, you are simply saying, uh, speaking words individually and coming up with them one at a time. It's a flimsy analogy, but it gets across the idea that actually, in order to simulate a more realistic conversation, we want to see the words appearing as quickly as possible, rather than waiting around for a big paragraph to appear all at once, because that can be quite overwhelming. We can also start to explore some of the intermediate steps that are going into our chain. Now, we have a very simple chain. If you remember, it's consisting only of a prompt and of a chat response. But LangServe allows us to deep dive into what this ends up looking like for the API. Now, you will certainly recognize the chat prompt template from episode zero. And you'll see that the first message is of type system and has a content of you are a helpful assistant who speaks like a pirate. This is the system prompt that we are using. Now, remember that we had a human message which would um, accept a text input. In this case, you see that the text input has been reformatted with our user input. Hi there, are you a real pirate? Now, this has been turned into a JSON object and passed through to the chat OpenAI endpoint. This is a little bit complicated, but essentially what we can see is it has ended up returning an entire JSON object. What we're looking at here is actually the final output of the application. Now, as we saw, there was animated output. Um, it was being streamed word by word, but this is the final 
output from the LLM. And you can see that we have the entire chat message. If we want, we can change this text and say, do you have any jokes? And clicking start, you can see what has changed whilst we're streaming this output. The chat prompt template has updated, but the chat open AI response is null, meaning that it doesn't exist because all we are doing is streaming words individually until we are finished and we are able to show uh, the complete response from open AI. Now, if we, let's see which joke it's come up with. Why did the pirate go to school? Because he wanted to improve his art school skills. That is absolutely awful. I think if there's one job that LLMs are definitely not stealing anytime soon, it will be comedians. That wraps it up for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed a shorter episode exploring LangServe. In the coming episodes, we'll be using this in order to create some genuine LangChain applications with a little bit more complicated than just pirate jokes. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.